So what is electromagnetic radiation? Well, electromagnetic radiation, or EMR, as it's often abbreviated to, is basically the label that we attach to lots and lots of different forms of, uh, of radiation. So here we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light waves, UV, ray, UV waves, X-ray waves, and gamma ray waves. So these are all types of electromagnetic radiation. And what they, what they form part of is, or, or what I've drawn here, is the electromagnetic spectrum. So all these different types of electromagnetic radiation are in fact the same thing. It's just their frequency energy and wavelength that, that change. They're all the same sort of the same type of wave. It's just their frequency, energy and wavelength that make them seem a little bit different. So for example, we, we consider light in its own category because that's what we're used to dealing with every day. However, it just so happens that you know radio waves are, on this, are made of the same stuff as light. It's just that uh, the frequency and wavelength of light is, uh, is such that our eyes can pick it up, whereas our eyes can't pick up these other forms of uh, electromagnetic radiation. So we've got this spectrum of all the different types of electromagnetic radiation. And if we go left to right along this the spectrum, what we get is we get increasing frequency. So for example, gamma, gamma ray waves have a higher frequency than radio waves. What that means is the gamma waves are gonna look a little bit like this, for example whereas radio waves will look a little bit like that. They're coming less frequently, There's, they've got a, a lower frequency. Similarly, if we go from left to right, uh, the energy increases. So gamma ray waves have more energy than radio, wa radio waves. Similarly, purple light has more energy than red light, and that's gonna be become very important as we, as we start analyzing atoms. Now, lastly, wavelength increases in the opposite direction. So, as you can see with, with my little uh, drawing here for radio waves and gamma ray waves, uh, radio waves have a bigger rate wavelength than gamma ray waves. So that's kind of the idea behind well, sort of how the, how the electromagnetic spectrum operates. And it's also sort of important to understand that we talk about these different types of electromagnetic radiation having a frequency and a wavelength as if they, as if they are, in fact, waves. However, it's important to be aware that although we are talking about, about waves of, of light, uh, these all of the electromagnetic radiation can also sort of be considered or analyzed as if it was or as, as, it, as if it were a particle. So we talk about, you know, uh, maybe red light having a frequency of this and an energy of, and, a, and a wavelength of, you know, X, a frequency of Y, so Y hertz and a wavelength of X meters. However, at the same time, what we need to talk about is the fact that a, a particle of red light or a photon of red light is gonna carry a specific amount of energy. And that amount of energy is gonna be different or it's gonna be less than the amount of energy carried by a photon of purple light and more than an, uh, the amount of energy carried by a photon of, micro, of, a, uh, of microwave radiation. So it's important to be aware that we can be a little bit loose with our terminology. We can say frequency and wavelength, uh, therefore implying that electromagnetic radiation is, uh, is, comes in waves, uh, although we can at the same time refer to electromagnetic radiation as consisting of particles or, or photons as we call them. So now that we understand a little bit about electromagnetic radiation, we're going to understand how the atom works and how the atom gets excited. So what I've drawn here is a lithium atom. Now lithium has an atomic number of three. So lithium has three protons in the nucleus and three electrons outside it. So what I've drawn on the left hand side here is what we call the ground state. Now the ground state means, you know, the atom in its most natural state, it's not excited. It's just all the electrons are sort of, everything's as low energy as possible. And so it's not excited. So I'll abbreviate energy to capital E. And so the way that we know that it's not excited or, it's, or that it is uh, low energy is that 
We've, we've filled the innermost electron shell first. So every atom has these shells of electrons, or these, elect these are orbit shells, where the electrons can, uh, can sort of live in. So we've got this inner shell here that contains two electrons, then we've got the next shell that can contain eight electrons, and so on. And this pattern of the number of electrons that, that each shell can contain is not too important. It's just important to be aware that each electron shell does have a maximum number of electrons that it can hold. And so when an atom is in the ground state, uh, the electrons like to fill the innermost shell first until that innermost shell has got all the electrons it can, it can fit, in this case two, and then it goes to the next shell and it fills, it fills that shell with all the electrons that it can fit, and then it moves on to the next shell, and so on. And that is how we uh, that and when those innermost shells are first filled, uh, when 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 the electron shells on the inside are the ones that are filled first, that is when we are in the ground state. Now, uh, each of these electron shells, well, electrons can only be present in in these specific electron shells. We can have this electron can be where I've drawn it here, or it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be on another sh on another shell out here. However. The, elect the electron can never be anywhere in between the shells. It cannot be in there like that. It has to be on one of these lines. It has to be in one of these specific uh, possible electron orbit shells. Now, if we combine that with uh, the, the idea that each electron shell can only carry, can on only uh, represents a certain, a specific amount of energy. So an electron in the first shell will have a specific amount of energy. And if we put any electron in that first shell, it will always have that same amount of energy. The same goes for the second shell and the third shell and so on. So because electrons can only occupy these specific energy uh, electron shells, and each of these electron shells has a specific amount of energy, then we know that electron shells, or electrons, can only carry very specific energy energies corresponding to the electron shell that they're in. So this electron, for example, can only carry uh, the energy corresponding to the first shell or the energy corresponding to the second shell. It can't carry energy and any energy in between. It can only So what this means is that if we want to excite this atom, if we add some more energy to this atom, in order, for example, maybe to move this electron in the first shell out to the second shell, then we need to add just the right, the exactly the right amount of energy to this electron, uh, such that the difference in, in energy levels between the first shell and the second shell is kind of bridged. So the energy that needs to be added to this electron is exactly equal to the difference in energy between the first and second shells. And so this energy can be gained by either light. So if we get a, a photon of light that a photon of light somewhere from this spectrum that, that ca is carrying exactly the right amount of energy, uh, then that will then if we are if we hit this electron with a, a photon of that of that type of light or of that type of uh, electromagnetic radiation, then it will be excited to the next shell. Another way we can excite an atom is by heating it, and by heating it, we can add just the right amount of energy needed. And so, when we heat, when we are, uh, when we excite this atom, what we get is this setup over here. So, as you can see, the uh, the electron here has been moved out. It was previously here, but now it has been moved out to here. And so, what we have on the left hand side, therefore, is something that we can call the excited state. So this is just one excited state, uh, and obviously because there's three electrons, these electrons these could be excited to other energy shells in lots and lots and lots of different ways. They could be excited in, you know, they could all move, they could all move to higher shells, or just or, the, or just this one could move to a higher shell. And so there's lots of different excited states that are possible. Now, if we've heated it, if we've heated this atom and we've added some light such that it gets to the excited state, this atom wants to wants to get back to the ground state, wants to move back this way as soon as possible. It hates being excited. It doesn't like it. And so what's going to happen is that this electron here is going to move back to, it, to, where it, to where it started almost immediately. And obviously if it's moving from the second shell to a lower energy shell, then uh, 
then the difference in energy is going to have to be uh, so we're going to have to release the energy that the electron is losing somehow. So as the electron loses the energy and it moves back to the inside shell, it releases that energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So it releases a photon of light that carries exactly the amount that exactly the energy equal to the difference between the first and second shells. So whereas the electron could be excited by the perfect uh, the just the right photon of light or heat. The, at, the atom can only be de-excited by releasing just the right photon of light. It can't be. It will not release heat as it's de-excited. So, uh, another thing to be aware of, which I've kind of alluded to slightly, is that the inside shells are the lowest energies. So that's very important to understand. So we've got electrons can only carry very specific energies, and the inside shells. have the lowest energy. So as we move further and further away from the nucleus, we're going to get more and more energetic. So the inside cells have the lowest energies. So that means that, uh, obviously, the, if, if we're getting excited, then we are moving away from the nucleus. We're not going to get excited and move towards the nucleus. And so if, for example, we, uh, we, we excited an atom with some heat, we excited a specific element, we'll say we excited lithium with some heat, and then we observed what, what, what colours of light were emitted as the atom was de-excited. And let's say that we observed it and we, got, we saw that some blue light was, was observed, was released, and we saw that some yellow light was released from the, uh, the atom. So we've observed two different colors of light here, and we've done some analysis, and we know that the only the, the two sort of de-excitation processes that have caused these two colors of light are either from the third shell to the first shell, or from the second shell to the first shell. And we want to we want to identify which of these colors of light represents which uh, de-excitation process. Now we know that the the further out we go, the, the further out a shell, an electron shell is, the more energy it has. So the third electron shell has more energy than the second electron shell. What that means is that if we're jumping from the third shell back to the first shell, there's going to be a bigger loss in energy, and an electron is going to lose more energy than if it was just jumping from the second shell back to the first shell. So we know that this one here has more energy. This, uh, this big uh, jump represents a jump of more energy. So that's the first step to working out uh, this problem here. Now, if we look up to our spectrum, we want to figure out which of the colors of light, the blue light or the yellow light, uh, carries more energy. Now, we can see up here I've drawn the colors of visible light in the, in the order that they, are sh that they should be on the spectrum. And so we can see here that blue light is more to the right. So blue light has more energy than yellow light. A photon of blue light has more energy than a photon of yellow light. So what that means is that if more energy is being released in the drop from the third shell to the first shell, and a blue photon is going to carry more energy, then that blue photon is going to be caused by the electron moving from the third shell to the first shell. Similarly, yellow, yellow photons have less energy. The jump from the second shell to the first shell uh, has a, is, represents a smaller loss in energy, and so the yellow line represents the change from the second shell to the first shell. So this gives us a bit more of an intricate understanding of how the atom works and how it can be excited using light or other forms of electromagnetic radiation, or in fact heat, and uh, the way in which that we can use that to analyse uh, different atoms. And so we're going to go through how we can uh, analyse that more thoroughly in lots of, di in lots of other videos. Uh, and so this is a very important basis for the area of spectroscopy, which we'll look at later on.